Good morning and welcome to our online service for 9.15 on the 21st of February. If this is your first time joining us, then you are especially welcome this morning. I've just got just a notice to share with you and then we're going to pray together and we're going to worship. The notice is just that now that we are in Lent, we are working our way through the book by Hannah Steele, Living His Story. And every day we're sending out uh, little daily thoughts and also we're sending out uh, a, vi a video each week and also a longer blog article each week. Um, if you've not joined in with that yet and actually you would like to, it's not too late. If you contact us at office at stchadsromley.co.uk, we can add you to the email list. Um, or if you go onto the church Facebook group uh, for the daily reflections, if you're a member of that, they're on there. If you're not a member of that but would like to be, then just send us a message and we can add you to that as well. So let's pray together and then we're going to sing our first hymn. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can worship you in freedom. We thank you for your love and your grace. Holy Spirit, would you come and fill our homes, fill our lives and fill us now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so let's sing our first hymn together. confession to Almighty God, using our Lenten confession from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict, and justified when you judge. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, 
and I will be whiter than snow. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we come to a time of sharing the peace together. In doing this, I invite you to maybe send a text message, or to make a phone call, or to make a note of someone that you will contact today to share the peace with. And so I say... Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the giver of life. The peace of the triune God be always with you. And so we share together a sign of that peace. Our Father God, who rules over heaven, we honour, we revere, and we respect you as our God. We ask that you bring your kingdom rule on earth, and we ask that your good and perfect will be done here. We realise that our nation has turned its back on you and ignored your kingship. We have trusted our own ways and tried to write you out of our story. We are truly sorry and ask for your forgiveness. Please turn the hearts and minds of all people in our country to recognise that we need you and your goodness to us. Please forgive us for trusting in stuff other than you. We thank you that you give us sufficient for each day and remember that you tell us not to worry about tomorrow. There is so much uncertainty about our tomorrows we're glad that you are trustworthy and we turn to you to receive your forgiveness for not trusting you wholeheartedly. Please give our leaders a mind that wants to turn to you and follow your ways of justice, freedom, priority care for the poor. We think before you of trade negotiations which are going on at present. In particular, there will soon be a vote in the Commons on the Genocide Amendment to the UK Trade Bill. If this is passed, it will ultimately bind our government to terminate all trade agreements with countries which commit genocide and use their own people for slave labour. Father God, please make us a generous, wise nation which acts on moral principles of respecting human dignities and freedoms. We don't want to be a country which acts out of short-term selfishness but acts in accordance with the values of the Kingdom of God. We ask that through these trade negotiations, our country will be able to champion human rights, especially freedom of religion or belief. Now, as we have just asked you to forgive us and return us as a nation to you, the true God, we thank you that you redeem us from the past and deal with us kindly. Please send your Holy Spirit to revitalise us and bring in your goodness and kindness. Thank you for every good and perfect gift which you give us. We see the signs of new life in the countryside and gardens. We have the hope of vaccines. We have the many kindnesses of neighbours. Please bring assistance to struggling families, to worn out care workers, to lonely people, to people who have lost their job, to people who feel they just cannot carry on. Thank you that we can sometimes join with you, God, in being the answer to our prayers, bringing practical love to people. We think of our own area for Romilly and surroundings. We ask you to flourish the Cherry Tree Project, the groups for new mums and dads, 
the Zoom church groups, the Alpha courses, and flourish the godly activities of other churches in our areas. May our local businesses and schools flourish too. We want to join you in your kingdom work and to be witnesses to your life within us. Yours, Lord God, is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son battled with the powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert. Help us to use these days to grow in wisdom and prayer that we may witness to your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is a collection of verses from 1 Thessalonians. Our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord. In spite of severe suffering, you welcome the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. We speak as men approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please men, but God who tests our hearts. And we also thank God continually because when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it actually is the word of God which is at work in you who believe. Please join me as we say the Apostles' Creed together. If you would like to, please stand as a mark of saying these words, but if that's not possible for you where you are, that's absolutely fine. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Pray with me as we look at God's truth together. Lord, God, speak to us afresh today through your word and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you begin to feel that we might be a, beginning to feel like we're in a new season? Um, early in the week, the temperature suddenly jumped, jumped from freezing to, to um, double figures. The sun came out. I know it's been a mixed week after that. It's half term for those who are in um, school age and in t education. So that means we've got through half a term um, of lockdown. We're halfway through February. Spring isn't that far away. The R number is coming down. The number of cases uh, of COVID is coming down. The vaccine numbers are going up and uh, we're into Lent. Now I know Lent is a is a challenging season but this year we're looking at um, evangelism and sharing witnessing to the good news of Jesus through the book Living His Story and it's full of stories of hope and expectation that stir us and our hope for God. So today I want to look at uh, a special theme, the theme of the Holy Spirit. One of the reasons I chose 1 Thessalonians was because this book has um, some nuggets in it of verses about the power of the Holy Spirit. We've chosen them as our readings today. I'm going to do this in two parts. This first part, I'm going to look at the power of the Spirit, um, particularly in people coming to know Jesus. And then later in the service, we're going to look at prophecy and how we hear from God. 
It says in chapter one, verse five, our gospel came to you, not just with words, but with um, also with power, with the Holy Spirit and with deep conviction. This is a very famous verse. And I read it when I was deciding to choose one Thessalonians. It's one of the verses that stuck out to me as having that sense of the power of God to see people saved. As I mentioned just now, and we've mentioned elsewhere, uh, we're encouraging people to study the book Living His Story. And we're doing daily doses of reflections on that and vlogs and blogs each week. It's a wonderful book that I loved reading because it boosted my faith and expectation of God bringing salvation to those around me. It's a stories after story of everyday people beginning to have a hunger and start that journey towards knowing Jesus and how we can meet them on the way and help them on that way with it. It's unthreatening, it's accessible. And I, for me, it helped me come to this subject with a fresh hope and expectation. It stirred me to pray and hope again for God to bring those around us. It helped me realise how well positioned we are normally with you know, many sense of community and connection with people around us to pray for people to come to know Jesus through ongoing relationship, through ongoing conversation. But when we think about this, for many of us, we hit the stumbling block of our experience that we hear these stories of wonderful uh, examples of people showing hunger for God, for God moving. But our own experience is one of frustration or disappointment. Our own experience is, well, well, why aren't the people in my life like the people in the book? I wrestle with that. One of the reasons I want us to look at this book is it helps us come to that afresh with hope, with expectation, even where there is past disappointment. But I wrestle with that gap between the stories I hear and the, the reality I have. The people I pray for haven't all come to know Jesus. But I think the key is that key thing we're looking at today is the power of the Holy Spirit. I've been a Christian for many years and I've seen many people come to know Jesus. I've heard many people's stories of how they come to know Jesus. Um, and in every single one, there's a reality that God, by his Holy Spirit, has broken into someone's life. And this is the great gap. And this verse is so famous because it says, our gospel doesn't come with words. It's not about how cleverly we present it, how well we understand the, the doctrine or the theology of the gospel. It's not how wise or persuasive or coercive or powerful we are in our gifts or our skills or our timing or our technique. None of that matters because the people only come to know Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. And there's three things to this. There's power, Holy Spirit and deep conviction. The role of the Spirit is so crucial to expecting people to come to know Jesus. And so this verse helps us realise that that's what we long for. I love stories of people coming to know Christ. I love hearing the stories, whatever stage of life, whatever they're in, because they always an element of the miraculous, of the unseen, of the mysterious, of God breaking in and doing something beautiful. And your story may be dramatic or it may be really straightforward, but at some point there'll be a point at which you realise God is real and he's at work. And this gives us a foundation for our faith. This verse shows us we need more than clever human effort. We need God to be at work. So power. Power um, can be used in so many different ways. Power, political power, um, physics and, and science of power, um, psychological power, but really power in every context means the ability to bring change over time. It's the it's when things change. And so Paul says our gospel came not just with words, not just with with intellectual assent to a certain set of ideas, but for people to switch stories in their life takes the power of God, the 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 dynamic power of God bringing change in their hearts, of waking them up to their need for him, of helping them see life differently. One of the phrases from the book that I picked up was um, that we're inviting people to switch stories, but change actually, people resist change. It takes the power of God to wake people up to that, that realisation that Jesus is real and to switch the story of their life. But when they do, they experience the power of God, they experience the goodness and the love of God. The power of God brings salvation, whether it's miraculous or just a simple waking up to our need for God. Second, he says, uh, by the way, the Holy Spirit. Now, 
we have a lot of understanding of the Holy Spirit. We have the whole of the New Testament. We have the New Testament and how it resonates with the Old Testament. We have books and courses and lots of teaching on that. Paul's letter to 1 Thessalonians is one of his first letters. And the early church were trying to put into language this extraordinary, powerful experience of the unseen God moving in their lives. And he uses the language of Holy Spirit to describe the unseen ways that God has moved. God moves in unseen ways, the things we cannot explain by human logic or rational thought. Coincidences, dreams, miracles, the power of the Spirit is so often at work in the story of someone coming to know Jesus. And thirdly, with deep conviction. I know for many of us the stumbling block when we think about witnessing and sharing our faith is that we know those who felt condemned in the past or judged. Don't want to go anywhere near church or Jesus because they think they're just going to be told they're rubbish. Just going to be dragged through and told that the things they do, the things they believe, the things they've done in the past, um, God wants to judge them. But what this verse shows us is that the conviction of the Spirit is not the judgment of the church. It's not our job to judge people. It's not our job to tell them that they're rubbish, to tell them they've got it wrong. Have you noticed telling someone they've got it wrong? What's the most natural reaction? It's to defend ourselves. And when someone's in a defensive posture, they're not open to the goodness and the love and the truth of God. The Spirit brings conviction. In your story of how you came to know Jesus, for many of you, it will be a case that realise God showed you that you were not the full person you, he made you to be. But he had a hope and a revelation of a better future and forgiveness of sins. But if you've just been bombarded by being told you're rubbish, being told you're a sinner, being feeling judged... That's when we put the walls up. I love this verse because it says our gospel came to you with power and the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. The Thessalonians had had deep conviction of the realised they needed God, but it came from the Holy Spirit, not from Paul, not from anyone telling them they got it wrong. So power, Holy Spirit and conviction. This is what we long for for the people around us. And as I look at this and I look at what the Spirit does, I have a simple challenge for us. God is, does the things that we cannot do. He does the powerful things. He does the unseen things. He does the convicting. And so what's our role? Our role is to love people and to pray, to build relationship, to create the connections, to give the space to work with God where he's working and to pray, to pray for the Holy Spirit to bring life, to bring conviction, to work powerfully, to cause coincidences, to make things happen. When I look at this gap between the stories I read in Hannah Steele's book and the reality of um, my experience, it calls me not to give up, but to pray. And I call you to do the same. Let's have greater expectation. Let's God stir our faith, stir our prayer lives to pray with patience and perseverance for his spirit to work in those around us. Amen. And so we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand on hold. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with 
So that brings us to the end of our service this morning. Let's pray together a prayer of blessing on our community. And you might want to stretch out a hand and repeat after me. God bless Romley. God bless our schools. God bless the teachers. God bless the children. God bless our care homes. God bless our businesses. God bless our key workers. God bless the neighbor to the left of us. God bless the neighbor to the right of us. God bless Romley. And so a final prayer of blessing for each of you. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and grant you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Do join us at 12 o'clock for our weekly Zoom catch-up. Have a fantastic week.